Bona Lacau, my garden of roses. Wired published an article today that I found absolutely hilarious because it exposes the sheer hypocrisy of the Silicon Valley with regards to the entire Mueller probe and their rather stark left-wing uh, thought bubble, which you're not even allowed to speak about without clearing your thoughts with your company first. I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. Uh, reading from the article on Wired, on Friday morning, just before 10 a.m. on the West Coast, the Office of the Special Counsel Robert Mueller published his indictment of 13 Russian operatives for interfering in the U.S. election. Of course, that's not exactly what happened, is it? Because most of the advertisements published occurred after the election. But, you know, Wired's not interested in the truth, they're interested in being in the cool kids club. The document was 37 pages, blah, blah, blah. It detailed how Russian operatives used the platform to push memes, plan rallies, create fake accounts, suppress the vote, that's completely made up, foment racism, and more. Again, let's just lie through our teeth there, Wired, why don't we? I mean, it's not like anyone's checking this shit, are they? But roughly eight hours after the indictment appeared online, Rob Goldman, a VP of ads for Facebook, decided he had a few points to add to the debate. He was just freelancing and had not cleared his thoughts with either fa had not cleared his thoughts with either Facebook's communication team or its senior management. Good lord, that is so fucking Orwellian. He didn't clear his thoughts with them. Uh, I'm sorry, this is his own Twitter account that he's posting on, and his posts say, Very excited to see the Mueller indictment today. We shared the Russian ads with Congress, Mueller and the American people, to help public the public understand how the Russians abused our system. Still, there are key facts about the Russian actions that are still not well understood. The majority of Russian ads spent happened after the election. We shared this fact, but very few outlets have covered it because it doesn't align with the main media narrative of Trump and the election. <clears throat> the main goal of the Russian propaganda and mis misinformation effort is to divide America by using our institutions, like free speech and social media, against us. It has stoked fear and hatred amongst Americans. It has worked incredibly well. We are quite divided as a nation. This is from his Twitter account at, at Robjective. Uh, and of course, President Trump jumped all over this, which I found absolutely hilarious, stating, uh, The fake news media never fails. Hard to ignore this fact from the vice president of Facebook ads, Rob Goldman, quoting the uh, tweet about the majority of Russian ad spend happened after the election. But of course, he had to later apologize to Facebook and Robert Mueller for this tweet that he made in which he was absolutely right. I mean, this is the man, the man, the individual who had to review and send these ads to Facebook, excuse me, to the Justice Department. So he knew when the money was spent, he knew how it was spent, he knew the content of these ads, and this media that even Wired is trying to continue pushing by saying that they tried to suppress the vote and foment racism is, you know, he knew that this was bullshit and Wired knows that this is bullshit. But anything they can do to slander Trump is what they're going to do. This is, of course, the problem we're facing right now. It, it's not that... And I talked about this in yesterday's video. The problem isn't that uh, Russians are trying to spread misinformation because they're not the only ones. Everyone's trying to spread information, be misinformation because it's hilarious. Trolling people is fucking hilarious. And doing so to the extent that you can get anti-Trump rallies that CNN and MSNBC spend an entire day discussing is even more hilarious. 
Newsbusters, another news outlet, actually covered this today, and it's something that everyone seems to be trying to avoid talking about. But CNN and MSNBC actually covered one of these rallies on their channel from about noon to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on, what was it, November 12th, I believe? So, after the election. Um, yes, November 12th. They gave enthusiastic coverage to a Russian organized anti Trump rally that day, and it was an anti Trump rally, just so people are completely clear on that fact. The Russians weren't 100% pushing for Trump. No, they were just causing chaos. They were just stirring the pot. And yet, we continue to hear from these outlets like MSNBC and CNN that all they wanted to do was help the Trump campaign. There's no evidence of collusion. In fact, there's enough evidence to show that they were literally playing as many sides as possible and doing so after the election more so than before. And yet here we are. Forgive me, um, still waking up, my throat's a little sore. Correspondents even celebrated the concept as a love rally, uh, repeating that the marchers and anti-Trump mantras including we reject the president-elect, text that appeared on the screen, but was arranged by the individuals in Russia, part of uh, internet research agency, who arranged the, uh, the, tr the rally alongside a pro-Trump rally, mind you, all to see if they could get us to do it. There's too many people these days who are willing to take the news media completely at face value, and more so if the news media thinks that a story works within their interests, no matter how benign or small, they're going to run with it without even fact-checking it. This is something they have repeatedly proven, and uh, now we're seeing it front and center. CNN and MSNBC pushed and supported these Russian rallies. They advertised them on the news and broadcast them for five hours out of that day. And we have Wired repeating the same talking points that are disproven by the facts, disproven by Robert Mueller's own indictments. But these people don't care. I mean, how much longer are we going to have to deal with these news outlets give, given a free pass for doing exactly the same thing the Russians are doing? Misinforming and fomenting anger within the American people and driving them based on misinformation and lies. Because this is all we're seeing right now. CNN, MSNBC, these companies don't have any interest in the actual republic in which we live. No, they want as many views as possible and to do so, they've picked a narrative that they're going to run with whether it's true or not and they will fill in their own facts, their own reality, substituting the reality if they need to. Continuing with the article, roughly eight hours, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, he made two obvious big errors, according to Wired, one of which was obvious and one of which was a bit subtle. The obvious error was asserting that one could understand the scope of the Russian propaganda campaign just through the ads. That is such a manipulative little statement. Asserting that one could understand the scope of the Russian propaganda campaign just through the ads, says Wired as if they have any concept of the Russian propaganda campaign. One, Rob Goldman was not looking in to the entire Russian propaganda campaign. No, he was looking into the ad campaign, the ad spend, the advertisements themselves. And he was not commenting on the entire propaganda campaign. He was commenting on the ads themselves. And yet, here we have Wired completely shifting, moving the goalpost, mind you, 
and just fucking around to show that, oh, we know better. We know better than he obviously didn't. And yet, you don't know better, Wired, because you yourself have completely misrepresented the story, lying in order to create a more intense introductory paragraph. Rush's ads were viewed roughly 11 million times, of which at least 50 to 60 percent were bots, mind you, while posts by Russian controlled accounts had view been viewed 150 million times. Leaving aside pure numbers, anyone who had read the indictment knew that the ads were a minute part of the operation. No, they weren't. Anyone who's read the, the indictment knows that the entire indictment is built around the ad spend and the identity theft. The identity theft taking up all of three pages in the indictment, while Facebook advertisements and events and stories took up 35 pages. So stop fucking around and lying, Wired. It's actually starting to get disgusting. I was laughing at the beginning of this because it's absolutely hilarious that Facebook has essentially exposed what a disturbing level of echo chamber looks like. Forgive me for pausing. My throat's not doing that great. And yet, now we have Wired. A magazine, I will assure you, has lost most of its credibility anyways, both within the tech community and the news community at large. Doing all they can to say, oh, look at us, we're virtue signaling that we're good enough, that we're part of the cool kids club like MSN, MSNBC, and CNN. But they're not, are they? They just want in on that sweet, sweet anti-Trump money. That sweet, sweet anti-Trump money that is quickly vaporizing as the mass media, uh, mainstream media, continues to devour itself. I mean, honestly, what is with these people and their lies? They cannot accept the possibility that things aren't possibly simpler, are not simpler, but less malicious than they perceive because they want to see reds under the bed. They want to see a Russian behind every mailbox because then the fact that they lost makes sense. Unfortunately, when you lose, you sometimes gotta buck up, lick your wounds and move on. But that's not something the mass media is going to do until they have pushed away every conservative and moderate reader and viewer that they have. What's hilarious is that uh, Bob Goldman didn't, wasn't even the only one who was promoting the, this information. Uh, another executive vice president, Andrew Bosworth, retweeted it and called it an important thread because it details facts about, uh, about uh, the use of Facebook within the, the uh, Internet Research Agency's campaign to spread discord and confusion amongst the American people. And yet, here we are with a bunch of people in Facebook saying, no, you can't say that. That has to be cleared with the, the higher ups. You can't say anything until you clear it with us. We are looking at a very, very ugly face within the left, within Silicon Valley specifically where if you don't have the right opinions, you are going to be put up on a stake and forced to apologize, made an example of, all for the sake of maintaining the narrative. Don't listen to the narrative. Hell, you don't even have to trust me. Do the research yourself. And as always, you can find links to the articles below. Bonsoir, Manchels.